World-renowned manufacturing genius Elon Musk has failed a basic Cybertruck stainless steel metallurgy test. And in this report, I'm going to read out his report card. I'm John Logan from autoexpert.com.au, new cars cheap, Australia only, website, card. So... Elon Musk is emphatically full of it again. Still, like clockwork, misinforming the public. He's like a German railway, that chap. So freaking dependable. Space Karen recently told the world this Cybertruck is designed in its uniquely angular way, just like a men's public urinal. Because otherwise, quote, it breaks the stamping press. Now... That's either a lie or just spectacularly misinformed. Because science, metallurgy, physics, engineering, they all say it doesn't work that way, dude. I'm going to tell you why in just a sec, but I challenge you right now to guess what breaks. Because something does break, just not the press. Have a guess what? Write it down. Commit it, dude. Let's see if you're right or not in just a sec. Space Karen further told everyone in the solar system that the Cybertruck is made from a brand new and somewhat spooky stainless steel, which he calls 30X, presumably because of his borderline OCD obsession with X. This implied claim of some revolutionary new metallurgy is, at best, also a spectacular liberty with the truth. The body of the cyber urinal is made of a 300-grade austenitic stainless steel. That's pretty clear. But the ability to add some sort of secret source here at this late stage in the evolution of stainless steel is its very limited. Let's be kind. He further told the galaxy and freaking CC'd the rest of the observable universe that the material is, quote, ultra-hard stainless steel. He added, for complete disambiguation, presumably, quote, it's really hard. And I think that's the first time he has ever said that, incidentally, proving perhaps that money can't buy everything. And like the metallurgical fluffer he has always aspired to be, seemingly, he added, quote, we're going to show you just how hard. Can't wait, dude. According to reality, however, 300-grade stainless steel is actually not that hard. They don't even measure its hardness on the Rockwell C scale, which is reserved for actual hard things like knife steel and drills and end mills and things of that nature. Like, you have tools in your garage which are harder than the cyber urinal's body. You can scratch a cyber urinal with a Scotch-Bright scourer. Like, if bulletproofing is what you need, just don't go shopping for hardness. Like, that would be a rule to live by. Glass is a fairly hard material, after all, but it typically doesn't stop bullets, does it? What I'm saying is, hardness and strength are different things, right? I think he means strong when he says hard, like, high tensile strength, strong, okay? But even here, given the benefit of this doubt, if we give him a free pass on the difference between hard and strong and hard actually meaning strong because he's not actually a qualified engineer, he's actually an economist with a second degree in physics, this is a fact, the reality is that there are steels used in the bodies of just about every frickin' modern car, steels that rust, which are almost twice as strong as the cyber urinal's stainless steel exoskeleton. This is a fact. So I dare you right now to take the red pill with me, you already outraged, seething, Kool-Aid-sipping Tesla fanboy. And I'm going to show you just how deep Elon Musk's metallurgical bullshit rabbit hole 
really goes. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Say you're in a cafe one day and you think you've just connected to the free Wi-Fi. But in fact, a hacker has just inserted himself between you and the internet and he's about to start ripping you off properly. How would you even know? This is called a man-in-the-middle attack. It's one of the most common ways to get hacked. But there's no law that says you have to be the next victim. You need countermeasures, and that's what NordVPN does. NordVPN does the stuff that you and I don't understand in the background. Encrypting your data, hiding your IP address, locking everything down, basically. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. The two-year plan discount is huge right now. Plus, you're going to get four extra months free. nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Just subscribe, download the app and connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded, your online traffic is masked with NSA-level encryption across as many as six of your devices. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the planet. It costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Because your location is masked, you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score some great deals on travel and accommodation that are not available at home. That happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now, boost your security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC, link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. So let's talk first about this allegation that this stainless steel is so special that it would break the press if Electric Jesus attempted to make the cyber urinal into a slightly less absurd shape. Stainless steels have been around since about 1800 or so, a bit before I think. So basically all of the metallurgy is known. There's nothing new to learn about forming stainless steel. Kitchen sinks, buckets, exhaust components, distillery and food processing equipment, etc. It's pressed, formed, deep drawn, stamped, punched, machined, whatever. And generally this is done using 300 grade stainless steel. 300 grade stainless steels, 304 is the most common, which is also called 1810, incidentally, followed by the next most common, which is called 316. It's austenitic, and this relates to the crystalline structure of the material. It's face-centered cubic crystal. That's for trivia night at the pub. Metallurgical trivia night, not to be missed. You're welcome. Dude. Two thirds of the stainless steel being made on earth today is 300 grade. It's got nickel and or manganese in it, maybe a bit of nitrogen and uh, I think they use molybdenum as well, but only in the 316, if memory serves. They do that for acid resistance. So anyway, more trivia special. Basically, you can't harden this stuff by heat treating. But the material does work harden when you form it or machine it. And this is a proper bastard if you're like halfway through a machining operation and that happens. Good way to burn up a perfectly serviceable high-speed steel tool. So anyway, you put your cyber urinal body blank in a press and you stamp it. And the formed body shell that pops out is harder than the blank that went in. Thanks very much, work hardening. It's a freaking miracle. It's like good or bad, depending on what you need to do. For every steel, there are these two definitive points on the stress strain curve. And if you don't study physics and you're not interested in metallurgy, stress and strain are basically proxies for load and deformation, like elongation, stretch, bending, whatever. Okay, the first one of these points is the yield point, which is where the material stops being elastic. Like 
the bend is going to be permanent if you proceed beyond that point, okay? The yield point. It's when it yields and becomes what they call plastic. The springs on your car operate below the yield point, obviously. It's fairly important that they do that. And you have to exceed the yield point to stamp a body panel in a car factory, obviously. Otherwise, it springs back to its original shape and that's not much good. And then there's the second point called the ultimate tensile strength or UTS, okay? If you load a part up past this point, the UTS, or even just maintain the load that got you to that point, then the failure just runs away. And this is quite bad if you're in the middle of a bridge. If you're in the middle of a bridge, I meant to say, or in a skyscraper or something and that happens. That's bad. So when you work hard on a piece of stainless steel, right, what you're really doing from a material science point of view is you're dragging the yield point up higher, much closer to the ultimate tensile strength. There's now less wriggle room for more forming operations. And if you want to experience work hardening, just get like a wire coat hanger from the dry cleaner and bend it backwards and forwards several times. It'll work harden and you get the two points closer and closer and you can see what that manifests itself like physically in the real world, okay? So you can drag that yield point right up there with repeated forming operations. And you've used steels routinely where the two points are very close, dude, you just have. If you've ever broken a high-speed steel twist drill by leaning on it the wrong way, there's just not much warning because the two points are basically right on top of each other, okay? So 304 stainless, for example, in its annealed state, like in its raw state, not work hardened at all. It's got a yield at about 200 MPa and the UTS is at like the ultimate tensile strength is at about 500 MPa. Don't worry about the MPa, okay? Don't worry about what an MPa is. It's a megapascal. You can look it up. Google knows everything, but don't worry. Just think about 200 and about 500 for the yield and ultimate tensile strength, respectively. If you press it and you bend it over and over, the 200 is going to climb up and get closer and closer and closer to the 500 with every forming operation you do. And you eventually get to a point where they're really, really close, right? And any attempt to do any more forming breaks something. It does but not the press, dude. It breaks the part. I guess it breaks the press if you use some chicken shit press to do the job of a real press and if there's no safety mechanism to prevent overloading. But subject to you using a press that's actually adequate to the job, it's the part that breaks, not the frickin' press. So... The bottom line here is that the Cybertruck looks like a ridiculous rolling urinal because the material itself would fail if they attempted to make it look any less absurd by forming it more. The press itself is going to be fine. Admittedly, Electric Jesus thinks he knows more about manufacturing than all other humans. And this is, of course, allowed. He's entitled to this somewhat grandiose self-image. Permit me, however, respectfully to say that I'm just not seeing it, dude. I'm not. This vehicle's aesthetic absurdity is embodied in the limitation of the material, not in a limitation inherent in the durability of industrial presses. That's absurd. Space Karen is dead wrong on that claim. <laughs> On hardness now, austenitic stainless steel, like 304, 316 grade, its hardness is measured on the Rockwell B scale. And this is reserved for softer materials like aluminium brass, low carbon steel, copper, etc. 300 grade stainless is in the 90s on Rockwell B, but you don't get to graduate to Rockwell C until you exceed 100 Rockwell B. Okay, a knife, like a pen knife or a kitchen knife, something like that, it's likely to be about 55 Rockwell C, high-speed steel end mill made of 
M2 is likely to be like 65 Rockwell C, ballpark. That's about as hard as steel gets. Tungsten carbide is about 75 HRC and vanadium carbide, which I think is second to diamond, that's about 80 or 85 HRC, depending on its composition. So if steel is a spectrum from hard to soft, the cyber urine or stainless steel is significantly harder than, say, the beams that hold a bridge up, okay? But it's still a relatively soft steel. It's nothing like a hard M2 high-speed steel. It is a very tough material, however, and this is why it stops bullets, of course, which is such a magnificently irrelevant attribute. <laughs> I just want to put the strength of this material in perspective now too because it's really not that strong. The tensile strength of steel is measured in megapascals, MPA, here in Schittsville, or PSI, like pounds per square inch, in America. One MPA is one newton acting on one square millimetre, basically. A newton's roughly 100 grams, 100 grams of force, roughly. Grams can be a unit of force, dude. They can. Grams can be weight. Weight is a force. If you want to argue the toss in the comments, knock yourself out. If you didn't pay sufficient attention at school, then let everyone know, and that's really not my problem, dude. One PSI for the Americans listening in is, pretty clearly, one pound of force acting on one square inch. Simple. And if you want to go from one to the other, one MPA is 145 PSI. So MPA times 145 equals PSI. And divided if you want to go the other way. So the ultimate tensile strength of 304 stainless is about 500 MPA. With 316, the UTS is pretty much the same. I got all these data from Atlas Steels, they'd know. All 300 grade stainless steel lives in this 500 MPA UTS ballpark, right? It's the same kind of stuff. Just about every modern unibody car uses a stamped carbon steel body shell. This is the stuff that rusts, okay? Albeit with very advanced structural design and pretty impressive metallurgy, I have to say. We're talking normal cars here too, not cyber wanking chariots designed by geniuses who quote, at this point, know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on earth, end quote. A salient feature of the non-masturbatory conventional car designs is the use of this thing called AHSS or advanced high strength steel. Okay, so what this stuff does is it allows designers to achieve the strength that they need with less steel, like less mass. So let's say you're shooting in R&D for energy efficiency, like fuel efficiency or battery energy efficiency, kilowatt hours per kilometer kind of thing. And you're also shooting for crash safety, in other words, as opposed to bulletproofing and public masturbation or something. This stuff allows you to achieve both of those objectives without compromising one to achieve the other. It's better at that, okay? So this is really important in mass market vehicle designs, advanced high strength steel. And the holy grail of AHSS is this thing called so-called gigapascal steel. And a gigapascal is a thousand megapascals. So this stuff has a minimum UTS, ultimate tensile strength, of 1,000 megapascals. It's used in key structural points in the body shell, like high stress points. And it's fairly cheap, it's okay to form, it's relatively easy to weld and paint. In other words, it's everything the cyber urinal is not. Take a Toyota Corolla, Hyundai i30, or a plethora of other boring but functional, reliable shitboxes rolling out there on the road today. Now, I know that these cars 
contains steel that is twice as strong as the special magical steel employed by Space Karen himself in the freaking Cybertruck. I know that. It's counterintuitive in the face of his grandiose statements, but it's also a fact. And now you know this too, do. And you might find this especially confronting. And you might see fit to have a spray in the comments. Knock yourself out. Characterise me, if you like, as a know-nothing hater. Knock yourself out. I promise not to care, not a bit, because your real issue here is with reality, not me. I did this report because there's perception over here and then there's reality. And we need to respect reality. The facts are quite important. Musk is... He's an anti-charismatic kook and his at times batshit crazy statements are widely accepted and enthusiastically amplified by news agencies that really should know better, but clearly they don't. The cyber urinal is made of a novel but wholly mediocre material that is objectively a poor choice for a vehicle. And some of the more public claims that Space Karen has made about this material are clearly bullshit. This is a vehicle that looks like a pisser that fell over. It just fell off the wall and rolled down the street. And it looks that way because there's no alternative. It has to look that way. It's going to scratch the first time you wash it because it's not a very hard material and you're not going to be able to buff the scratches out. So it's going to look terrible over time. It's not a super strong material, and that's why it's so freaking thick. Mundane cars are routinely made of, in part, substantially stronger steel. Crash repair and insurance costs of the cyber piss trough are also going to be a freaking nightmare, incidentally. And these attributes are directly linked to Space Karen's choice of novel, but in many ways, inappropriate material. 